over and over. So today, I'm going to help us out a little bit. I want you, we have been talking about our inheritance in Christ, which is the inheritance of Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. And we said that that inheritance is found in Revelation 5, what? 12. 12. See, the more you hear it, the more you know it. If I come up to you later and I say, where is your inheritance? You're going to say what? Revelation 5, 12. 12. And how many elements of that inheritance? Seven. See, somebody, so you just learned that today, huh? Seven. Oh, watch this. Can you tell me what they are? Do you know it by heart? Huh? Power. You don't see me with any notes, do you? Power and riches and wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Say, power and riches and wisdom and strength. Honor and glory and bless. See, I got power and wisdom and all. Oh, that flashback. Sorry, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Love God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's all right. That's all right. But I'm going to run on with it. Y'all keep on. Power and riches and wisdom and strength. Honor and glory and bless. Say, power and riches and wisdom and strength. Honor and glory and blessing. Say, power, power and riches and wisdom and strength. Honor and glory and blessing. All right, so that's that's the sevenfold inheritance. And today, for the rest of the time, I am going to break it down because faith comes by hearing. So the more you hear what you have inherited, the more you can believe, and the more you can believe, the more you can walk in it. Can amen. I get an amen? amen? Here we go. Power. Somebody say power. Power. That word, power there, is really speaking about, and notice, I'm going to give you all of these seven, and they all begin with the letter A. The Holy Spirit gave it to you. It's all A. So the first one is, that word power there is talking about the fact that we have received, we've inherited authority. We've inherited authority. We've inherited the authority of Christ. And i got some scriptures. I'm moving fast now, so we got to... Stay with me. Did I print the scriptures on there? Yes. Okay, so you got the scriptures on there. Yes. And the scriptures are Matthew 28, 18 and 19, and Mark 16, 16 through 17. Basically, in both of those instances, Jesus was saying, here's what you can now do in my what? Name. Yes, or in my authority. That's what name means. It means in his authority. Say authority. authority. Say, I have Inherited, inherited the authority, the authority of, Christ. of Christ. My God. Do you know what that means? Do you realize this is, this is where revelation knowledge comes in? When you keep on hearing the word, it's going to bring revelation knowledge. What kind of authority did Jesus have? The man would come and demons would be shaking in their boots. Oh, oh, Mustafa. I mean, you know, they were like, whoa. Jesus, no, don't, 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 don't cast us out. Throw us in the pigs if you want to. Do you realize you've inherited that name? You've inherited that authority? So therefore, exercise it. When you come and listen, you don't be sitting up there talking about, yeah, I don't know about this place, there's some spirits in this place. You can, if there's some spirits in there in the name of Jesus, you come right in and bang. You just take authority over that because you've inherited his authority. Do you realize he said that's what he talked? He said you inherited his authority to, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all of, of the power of the ability of the enemy. He said you've inherited the authority to lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Hey, he said you've inherited the authority to cast out demons, to cast out devils. In, the in other words, you got to understand, we got to stop running around talking about the devil busy, the devil this. The devil is scared of the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? And if you operating in that authority, he, he, I, I just love the prayer this morning. Sister Pat was praying. She was binding and loosing. She, in the name of Jesus, Satan, we bind you. And, you know, you because why? You have that authority. Somebody say, a legal right. A legal right. To bind. And loose anything that be not of God. And then listen, listen. Of course, you have that authority to go preach that gospel. That's Matthew 28. So you can't sit on that. You have, you've been authorized. 
to prophesy. You can authorize it to go out there. Talk about that, uh, you know, I don't know. Some people were called to do this. No, that's the whole body. So let me move on. Somebody say authority. authority. All right, that's power. Then the second one was what? Riches. The key word for power was authority. The key A word for riches is abundance. We have inherited authority in Christ, but we've also inherited abundance in Christ. Now, this is important because once you get revelation knowledge that you've inherited, listen to me. See, this thing is always higher than us. Our problem is we think about things through our perspective. We've got to start seeing things through God's perspective. We've inherited his authority. Watch this. We've inherited his abundance. Remember that example I gave you about the, uh, the bank account? See, let's take that example a little further. The first problem is, we, you know, we got to make sure we got access to the account. But the second problem is we got to understand that the account now is bigger than our personal account. We've been trying to deal with stuff based upon what we got in the bank. But, but he doesn't, this is not about accessing our account. This is about accessing his account. The Bible says, my God shall supply all my need. But we can't stop right there because if you think it just like that, you, you cut it off right there. You say, well, then I have a God who's just enough. No, no, no. Somebody say, keep reading. According to his what? Riches. See, there it is, riches. Riches in glory. Philippians 4, 19. Somebody say, God has everything. God has everything. Say, my father is rich. Father is in houses and, lands. houses and lands. He holds the whole world, the whole world. In, the in the hollow of his hand. In other words, when I, listen, I don't just have the pin number to my bank account. I got the one to his bank account. You know, I, come on somebody. You know how it was when you were a little child and you're like, well, you know, your parents gave you a little savings account or something like that. But man, that ain't, you know, that ain't too much. But, but, but what would it be like if they said, now here, baby, here's, you know, here's my debit card and here's my pin number. Go on and have that. Praise the Lord. I would be like that, huh? See, see. According to, not according to my riches and glory, because in the natural, I don't have any riches and glory. It's according to his riches and glory. Say, say, my God, my God is, not a God is not a God of just enough. Of just enough. He's, a God He's a God of more than enough. More than enough. Get the God of more than enough some praise. Amen. Get the God of more than enough. Amen. See, we, see, 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 watch this. Faith comes by hearing. Oh, faith comes by hearing. It didn't just say believe. We don't believe is the root of faith, but it actually said faith comes by hearing. So at the end of the day, what are you hearing for? You start out hearing to believe or for believing, but at the end of the day, you're hearing for what? For faith. In other words, for acting upon what you believe. Yeah, faith comes by hearing. In other words, it's going to change how you how you conduct yourself. It's going to change how you do business. Because, and, and, and once we get into the speaking parts, it's going to change how you speak. Once you realize that your father is, is you have access to all his riches and glory, and of course that word riches there, it doesn't just mean money. It means abundance. It means wealth. It, 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 it doesn't even have to be money. It can be resources. What you need, the Lord's God. He'll hook you up with it. Listen, you in the body of Christ, and everything you need is in his body. So he, if he got to put you together with this person, that person, he'll put you together with him, and you'll have favor, and you can get anything you need done, and you don't have to have any money to do it. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. And then power was authority, riches and abundance, wisdom. Wisdom, the A there, is anointed intellect. Anointed intellect. We've, been, we've inherited an anointed intellect. In other words, supernatural knowledge, or excuse me, supernatural application of knowledge. Church, how valuable do you think it is to be able to make the right choices and the right decisions every day, all day? Amen. What do you think the price would of that would sell for? That's priceless, huh? Like that commercial? You know, that's priceless for everything else is MasterCard. But listen, that's priceless. That's priceless. To make, to be able to make the right choices in life. Because you know the wrong choices in life, what? Cost you. They're life-changing and long-lasting. Most of us in here, we all made some bad choices and that, that, that thing reverberated. It's just 
carried on for a long time. But Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, will give you one of my wife's favorite scriptures, James 1, 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him, he's talking about believer. Any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And he giveth to you what? Liberally. Liberally. And I'm greater than that. Wait a minute. You're talking about he gave it to the people who went to the university? No. You're talking about the people that had the big money? He gave it to them? He said, no. He said, if any man, any born again believer who's in the will of God, the inheritance of God, who is in that covenant, say, God, I need some wisdom. He said, well, guess what? I'm going to give you wisdom from above, and you will definitely know how to make every choice in life because you only got two things you got to look to. His word and his spirit. And you'll make the right choice every time. Give God some praise. Amen. Every time. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Every time. So now look, we said that we said that this inherited power was authority. We said this inherited riches was an anointed intellect. Uh, excuse me, riches was abundance. We said that this uh, anointed, this inherited wisdom was an anointed intellect. What about this strength? This strength is a ability. This strength is ability in Christ. Ability in Christ. In other words, it's supernatural ability to accomplish his purposes. His purposes. Remember I said this is all about his purposes. Not about your purpose. It's about his purpose. It's supernatural uh, ability to accomplish his purposes. Now here's the key. Regardless of age or situation. Regardless of age or situation, y'all didn't hear me. Yeah. I said, regardless of age yeah. or situation. In other words, I, what's the scripture for this? The scripture for this is Philippians 4:13. I can do what? All, All things. things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you realize what that means? I'm gonna tell you what it means. It means that you are. Listen, we got. I'm looking at some of these junior ushers we got. Did you notice the junior ushers doing their thing to the kids? Let's give it up for the junior ushers. That means that, hey, it doesn't matter. He told Jeremiah, he said, it don't matter how young you are. He said, as long as I'm with you, you can do it. You, you don't worry. He said, he said, don't look at their faces. Look over their heads. He said, don't you be afraid. You go preach to them. Because guess what? If God's uh, uh, anointing is in you and on you, it doesn't matter how young you are, you can do it. And I got news for you. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can do it too. You can be, listen, you can be old as Methuselah and you can still get the job done because he's giving you supernatural ability. I love what the Lord said. He said he satisfies my mouth. He satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. Do you realize what that's talking about? He's talking about the fact that after I keep hearing that I have supernatural ability, after a while, I start speaking it, and as I speak it, I'm flying on the wings of grace. I'm doing exactly what God told me to do, because I believe it, I receive it, and I act upon it, and faith comes by here and gives God some praise. Amen. And then I just got to finish this, got to finish it. He said, he said, the, 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 what is this? The fifth uh, element of your inheritance is honor. Is honor. Do you realize what God is saying right here? He's saying that you have inherited the right to be honored. Now, I, I'm a really good uh, uh, person for God to use to share this with you, to understand what this is, what this is. When, when I, before I uh, got into politics, and people would write me a letter or whatever, they'd say, Mr. Tucker, you know? Once I got into politics, every letter I used to get, the Honorable, the Honorable Walter R. Tucker III, as the Mayor of Compton, as the Congressman for Carson Compton, the Honorable, the Honorable. What I'm trying to tell you is, this inheritance is God saying to you that it doesn't matter who didn't uh, recognize you. That word, by the A word there is acknowledgement, by the way. Who, it doesn't matter who never acknowledged you. It doesn't matter whoever dissed you. It doesn't matter who didn't recognize you. As far as God is concerned, he calls you honorable. And guess what? It's only a matter of time before he's going to put you on display. 
He says, give honor to whom honor is due. So since he calls you honorable, he's going to treat you honorably. And, if, and though you might have been low and disrespected, though they might have talked about you when you were growing up, they might have laughed at you, they might have said things behind your back, God said, but let me handle it. I'm going to raise you up. Listen, they, 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 the brothers told Joseph, they said, who are you? You the, you the young, you the baby in the family. You can't tell us what you, God gave you a dream, told you that we were going to buy before. We ain't never going to buy before, you fool. We're going to kill you. We'll put you down in the, the lowest pit. But guess what? It might have taken a little while because guess what? God didn't promise that it was going to happen overnight. But you just stay with God and in the, in the due season he said, though you have been low, I'm going to raise you up and you're going to be honored. Come on somebody. Give God praise for